Hi guys, in this video we'll look at higher index inequalities, quadratic inequalities, examples, and we'll finish with a summary. So how can we solve higher index inequalities? So far, we have been dealing with inequalities of expressions involving terms of index no greater than 1. For example, maybe you asked to solve the inequality 6 lots of x minus 3 is strictly greater than 2x plus 5. Or maybe you asked to solve the inequality 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 4x minus 15. In both of these inequalities, we have index 0 terms, and we also have index 1 terms, but no terms that are any higher. We may be interested in being able to solve inequalities with higher index terms. For example, we may want to be able to find all values of x such that the following inequality is true. 3 lots of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 is strictly less than 0. This inequality has index 0 terms, i.e. the 1 and the 0. It has an index 1 term, the minus 4x, but it also has index 2 and index 3 terms, the minus 2x squared and 3x cubed. We will develop a method for solving these types of problems. So firstly, how can we solve quadratic inequalities? The simplest case of higher index inequalities are quadratic. For example, consider the inequality 2 lots of x squared minus x is strictly greater than 0. We can solve quadratic inequalities graphically by finding the roots in the case of equality to 0. So what we can do is take our inequality left hand side, 2x squared minus x, and we can set it equal to 0, i.e. we can examine the equality case. And in this situation, we can find the roots of this equation. We can then consider the shape of the relevant curve, interpreting the roots as the x-intercept of the curve. So we look at the curve y equals 2x squared minus x, and therefore the roots of our above equation, or equality, are the x-intercepts. And the shape and behaviour of the curve are important for solving the inequality. We can find these roots, or x-intercepts, by factorising completing the square or using the quadratic formula. So in order to solve our equation 2 lots of x squared minus x equals 0, we can do so by first factorising, i.e. we have x multiplied by 2x minus 1 equals 0, or we can complete the square. By dividing our equation by 2, we get x squared minus 1 half x equals 0. Therefore we get x minus 1 quarter all squared minus 1 sixteenth is equal to 0. So we completed the square. Finally, we can use the quadratic formula, i.e. we get that x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 0, because c is 0. And then we divide by 2 times 2. Each of our three methods for solving this equation gives the solutions x equals 0 or x equals 1 half. We can use the x-intercepts to label and interpret the graph. We have our x-intercepts occurring at 0 and 1 half, and we're looking to find when the expression 2x squared minus x is strictly positive. And therefore, we can look at our curve and see when it itself is above the x-axis, and then we can shade the region for which the curve is above the x-axis. Namely, we have this region, which is x being strictly less than 0, and this region here, which is x being strictly greater than 1 half. And so, we get the solution to our inequality. x is strictly less than 0, or x is strictly greater than 1 half. Whether the resulting inequalities are slack or strict depends on the state of the original inequality. We had the inequality 2x squared minus x is strictly greater than 0, and we've seen that it's solved by x being strictly less than 0 or x being strictly greater than 1 half. In either case, all three of these inequalities 
are strict inequalities. If instead the inequality was two lots of x squared minus x is greater than or equal to zero, then as a result, the only difference is going to be x being less than or equal to zero or x being greater than or equal to one half. So because our original inequality was slack, this corresponds to our answer being slack inequalities. In either case, we can graph the solution on a number line. So let's take our first case, two lots of x squared minus x is strictly greater than zero. The solution is x being less than zero strictly or x being greater than one half strictly. Therefore, we can plot on some points on a number line, minus one, minus a half, zero, one half, and one. We can then put some circles which are clear at zero and one half because they are slack inequalities. And then we have an arrow to the left for x less than zero and an arrow to the right for x greater than one half. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to graph the solution of x squared minus six x plus eight is less than or equal to zero on a number line. Our first step is to find the roots when we have equality with x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. We set our left hand side expression x squared minus 6x plus 8 equal to 0. Therefore we can factorise this as x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 4 and this is equal to 0. This gives us x equals 2 or x equals 4. Our second step is to draw the graph of the curve y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. We have our x and our y axes, and then we have our curve. This passes in the x axis through 2 and 4, which is all that is important. Our third step is to recall the type of the given inequality. We have our inequality is slack, because we have the equal to case as well. Our fourth step is to shade the region of the values for which the curve is below the x-axis. So again we have our x and our y-axis. We sketch on our curve and our intercepts are at 2 and 4 and we can shave when the graph is less than or equal to 0 since it will be in between. Our fifth step is to describe the shaded region in terms of inequalities. We have our inequality x squared minus 6x plus 8 is less than or equal to 0. Therefore, based on the above, we have that x can be between 2 and 4, inclusive, because our original inequality is slack, as opposed to strict. Our last step is to graph the solution. We can write on some points 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then if we put in filled in circles at 2 and 4, and we have a line in between them, giving our solution. Our second example asks us to graph the solution of x multiplied by x minus 1 is strictly greater than 3 minus x squared on a number line. Our first step is to rearrange the inequality into quadratic standard form. Our inequality says x multiplied by x minus 1 is strictly greater than 3 minus x squared. Therefore, we can expand and have x squared minus x on the left hand side is strictly greater than 3 minus x squared. And this gives us by rearranging two lots of x squared minus x minus three is strictly greater than zero. Our second step is to find the roots when we have equality with two x squared minus x minus three equals zero. We first solve the equality case. Two x squared minus x minus three is equal to zero. We can then factorize the expression equal to zero and we have two lots of x minus three as one of our brackets and the other bracket is x plus one. Therefore, the roots of the equation are x equals 3 over 2, or we can have x equals minus 1. Our third step is to draw the graph of the curve y equals 2x squared minus x minus 3. We have our x and our y axes, and we can draw on our curve. We have our x-intercepts at minus 1 and 3 over 2. Our fourth step is to recall the type of inequality. Our inequality is like this, and so it's a strict inequality. 
Our fifth step is to shade the region of values which the curve is above the x-axis. We again have our x and our y-axis, and then we can draw on our curve, intersecting at minus 1 and 3 over 2, and we're looking for this curve to be above the x-axis, due to our inequality having the direction that it does, and therefore we have this region and this region. Our sixth step is to describe the shaded region in terms of inequalities. Our inequality is 2x squared minus x minus 3 is greater than 0 by our rearrangement. Therefore, we have that x is less than minus 1 strictly, or we have that x is greater than 3 over 2, again strictly. And it's strict because our original inequality is itself strict. Our last step is to graph the solution. We can put on some values, namely minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we need two blank circles at minus 1 and 3 over 2. And then we go off to the left with our left one, and off to the right with our right-hand side one. This is our solution. Our last example asks the graph the solution of 4 over x is greater than or equal to 1 on a number line. Our first step is to identify the strategy. Our strategy is going to be to multiply in order to remove fractions. Our second step is to multiply by x squared to make sure that the direction of the inequality does not change. Our inequality is 4 over x is greater than or equal to 1. But recall, if we multiply by a negative, we have to change the direction of the inequality. So just multiplying by x could give us a positive or a negative. Therefore, the safest bet is to multiply both sides by x squared, which is positive. So we multiply that by x squared to both sides. And this gives us our left-hand side as 4x and our right-hand side as x squared. And we need not change the direction of the inequality because we multiply by a certain positive. Our third step is to rearrange the inequality into quadratic standard form. Our inequality is 4x is greater than or equal to x squared. Therefore, we can rearrange and have x squared on the left-hand side minus 4x is less than or equal to 0. Our fourth step is to find the roots when we have equality with x squared minus 4x equals 0. We can solve the equation x squared minus 4x equals 0 by factorising. And we get an x multiplied by x minus 4 is equal to 0. And this gives us two roots of x equals 0 or x equals 4. Our fifth step is to draw the graph on the curve y equals x squared minus 4x. We have our x and our y axes, and the curve looks like this, passing through 0 and 4. Our sixth step is to recall the type of the given inequality. We have this inequality, which is a slack inequality. Our seventh step is to shade the region of values which the curve is below the x-axis. Again, we have our x and our y axes, and the graph looks like this, passing through 4, and we're looking for it to be less than or equal to 0. So it needs to be below the x-axis, which occurs in here. Our eighth step is to describe the shaded region in terms of inequalities. We need to solve the inequality x squared minus 4x is less than or equal to 0. Therefore, based on our above graph, we have that 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. And again, we have a slack inequality here, giving us slack inequalities for our answer. However, our ninth step is to check the inequality in the original context. Our inequality is 4 over x has to be greater than or equal to 1. But this does not allow the possibility of x being equal to 0. Namely, x cannot be equal to 0. Because then 4 over x is undefined. So we cannot have equal to 0, but we can have every other value. So we can have 0 is strictly less than x, which is less than or equal to 4. Whenever you change context, make sure to check against the original context. We went from this graph to a quadratic. And therefore, it's important to check in the original context. Our last step is to graph the solution. We can draw on some points, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
and then we have a blank line at zero corresponding to the strict inequality and a filled in circle at four. And we have a line in between them. This is our graph of our solution. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snapify smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.